he contacts with Gbagbo or his, uh, or his, or his, his, his administration once he, uh, in an attempt to get him out of, uh, out of the palace or, and out of power? I'm sorry, I, I missed just the top of your uh, question. I apologize. You, you said something about contact with Bagbo, is that correct? Yes. Do you have any contact with the Bagbo, and are you in any way involved in getting him to be office? Well, I mean, certainly we're involved uh, as part of the larger international effort, uh, largely through ECOWAS, but, uh, you know, part of our response has been to apply sanctions, visa restrictions on uh, Bagbo and his... Uh, uh, compatriots and to apply that kind of diplomatic pressure, if you will, uh, via those restrictions and other sanctions that will uh, increase the pressure on him and help him make uh, the right decision. Our embassy and our ambassador, I believe, has been in touch with all parties and remains in contact with all parties. And certainly uh, we're very clear both in public and private about our message that, uh, that Mr. Bagbo uh, should depart and allow for a, a, a democratic transition to take place uh, and, and for uh, President Ouattara to take office. Kampala, Uganda, your line is open. Uh, my name is Henry of the New Vision. Uh, Mark, I share the discussion of uh, most Africans against the dictators and believe that uh, international intervention is generally agreeable. But the concern is, what is the great strategy of NATO and the players uh, in these conflicts? Do they leave Libya and the Ivory Coast like Iraq with the nagging war? I'm sorry, what was the last part of your question? I didn't quite hear it. But will the international actors leave Libya and the Ivory Coast like Iraq with the nagging war? So you're, you're, you're asking, uh, you're asking, that you're, you're concerned about the, the role of NATO? I apologize. I, I didn't hear it. What is, the, what is the strategy? Yeah, the great strategy. How will this end? In, in Libya? Yeah, both countries. Oh, in, in both countries. What's what's the international strategy? Yes, please. Okay, very good. Well, I, I think, the, it, let me just take Libya first. Um, in Libya, um, there was a lot of confusion, um, I think, when UN Security Council Resolution 1973 uh, was implemented and was passed and was implemented. And uh, UN uh, Security Council Resolution 1973 is very clear in what it will do uh, and what it seeks to, to do, and that is to to end the violence against the, the Libyan people and uh, innocent civilians who are being targeted by Qaddafi's uh, uh, military, and to uh, provide humanitarian assistance uh, to those people. Frankly, uh, in, in a very short time, uh, it's been a tremendous success. It has saved the people of Benghazi. It has prevented uh, what we and what others considered uh, was a pending wholesale slaughter of civilians uh, had Qaddafi's forces entered the city. And uh, it's brought humanitarian assistance to those people. And the U.S. has, uh, has also been part of that effort to provide humanitarian assistance, uh, medical personnel uh, that they've been providing through uh, NGOs and non-governmental organizations uh, active in Benghazi and elsewhere in eastern Libya. So UN Security Council Resolution 1973, undertaken by the international community because they saw a pending catastrophe, has been successful. Now, long term, we have, we have a different goal, and that is to, to set in place a, a democratic transition that addresses the aspirations of the, the Libyan people. We uh, believe that uh, Muammar Gaddafi can no longer be considered a legitimate leader after his actions. And so the long term goal here is to uh, encourage him to step down and to allow for a, a democratic transition to take place. Now, that doesn't need to be uh, done at, uh, through the barrel of a gun. In fact, uh, there's lots of talk about arming the rebels or whether or not to arm the rebels. There are other ways to put pressure on his regime. And we, we've seen already that uh, those around him are, are feeling the heat. Uh, his foreign minister, uh, Musa Kusa, last week uh, defected to uh, London. And uh, that to us is a clear signal that, that some of his long-term uh, compatriots uh, and close associates are uh, indeed uh, feeling the pressure and are also uh, trying to disassociate themselves with the actions of Qaddafi. So, so, there's, so there's almost a two-pronged or a short-term and a, and a longer-term approach to, uh, to, to Libya that, uh, that you're seeing play out here. The short-term is to obviously uh, end the violence to create a, a to to a ceasefire 
uh, that will uh, that will uh, ease pressure on the on the citizens of Benghazi and elsewhere in eastern Libya, and to uh, and to bring humanitarian assistance to those uh, those civilians. UN Security Council Resolution 1973 is really about protecting uh, innocent civilian lives. Longer term, we want to see uh, Gaddafi step aside, and we want to see a peaceful democratic transition pl take place that, uh, that, again, addresses the aspirations of the Libyan people. Now, in Cote d'Ivoire, it is a situation where you have a, a leader who uh, lost an election, uh, pure and simple, uh, an election that was... Uh, that was supported by the international community, election results that were supported by the international community, by outside monitors who said uh, without a doubt that Alessandro Ouattara won the election fair and square. Uh, he being uh, Laurent Bagbo has refused to step aside and allow for, for that democratic transition to a new president uh, to take place. And so he has created conditions today that are uh, very concerning. There's, uh, there's continued violence. There's an uptick in violence. There is, uh, there's fighting uh, that continues. Uh, it's a very fluid situation, and that's why uh, we want Mr. Bagbo to step aside for the good of the uh, Ivorian people. He's really pushing the country into lawlessness. So, you know, the path forward's clear. He needs to leave. The conflict can end, and uh, that transition to uh, President Ouattara can take place. But again, as I said before, we should be under no illusion. It's, it's clear that both parties bear responsibility on respecting human rights and ensuring the safety of the citizens of Cote d'Ivoire. That's very important, and, the sec and Secretary Clinton, Secretary of State Clinton, uh, said that in her statement the other day, that both parties bear responsibility to respect those rights, and both sides need to show restraint. But let's be very uh, very clear, and let's be under no illusions that, uh, that Mr. Bagbo is the root cause of the instability and the violence that's taking place in, the, in uh, Cote d'Ivoire today. Next question. Hello, my name is Cecil. I want to follow up on your goals. You have stated clearly your long-term goals, mm -hmm. which to, um, is to pursue Muammar Gaddafi to step down, and then your short term is to end the violence. What of if Muammar Gaddafi fails to step down? I am working with GBC Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. My name is Cecil. Thanks, Cecil. Uh, that's a good question and a fair one. You know, it's impossible to predict all the possible outcomes to the situation in, in Libya. And uh, to some extent, uh, we need to take it one step at a time and not try to speculate too much. And so, you know, th what, was, what was paramount uh, in passing uh, 1973 was that uh, there was an urgency. Uh, there was uh, an urgency that cried out for action, uh, and that was the imminent uh, uh, attack on Benghazi. As I said, a city of uh, 700,000 people, and Colonel Gaddafi's uh, threats to uh, to go door to door uh, in that city. We wanted to uh, prevent, and we acted to prevent uh, a humanitarian catastrophe. And I think it speaks uh, well of the international community that, uh, and it shows, in my mind, that we've or the capacity to learn from uh, from past actions or inaction, if you will. We've seen the international community slow to act, and and acting after the fact. And, uh, you know, as the Secretary and others noted, you know, it's hard to uh, generate media coverage of an event that didn't happen. And so we didn't have uh, wholesale slaughter in the streets of Benghazi. That's a very good thing. But, uh, you know, that didn't generate the kind of media coverage. And so everyone was focused on uh, the no-fly zone and the attacks on Qaddafi's uh, forces. Um, but it's important to understand why we acted. Uh, and, and what we did to, to prevent uh, what we believed was a, was, a, was a pending slaughter, frankly. But long term, um, we, we don't feel that uh, we need to accomplish our goals uh, through the barrel of a gun uh, in getting Qaddafi to leave. We believe that pressure uh, can be applied uh, through diplomatic channels, through uh, increased sanctions. We believe that uh, you know, eventually, as his, uh, as his regime crumbles, as he has more and more defections, that... Uh, Colonel Qaddafi will uh, will read the writing on the wall. Next question. Hello, uh, my name is Ali uh, from Mozambique with South Albania. You, you have been mentioning that uh, Qaddafi must go and that you have, you'll be following diplomatic channels and sanctions. But then there is something that somehow seems to be, be hovering over the horizon. That is a possible indictment by the ICC. How do you think all these other measures will be effective when you have this 
spectra of an indictment uh, hovering over the horizon because most of these presidents, when they hear that uh, the ICC is about to move on or not charge them, then they get entrenched into power and will do every, every possible thing to hang on to power. How do you think it is effective at this moment to start talking about ICC? You know, that's an excellent question. It's a question I get here uh, from our from our journalists, uh, and I've gotten several times. You know, and, and, and it's a fair question. You know, why should he leave if he's going to uh, end up indicted in the ICC? As you know, just to, for everyone's uh, benefit, one of the effects of the uh, of the first uh, UN Security Council resolution uh, on Libya, 1970, was to refer the, the situation there to the ICC. I understand your question. I understand that aspect of it. You know, no one gets a free pass, and and leaders must be held accountable uh, for their actions. That's kind of a fundamental tenet of uh, of uh, human rights protection that we need to uphold in this situation. He has carried out attacks against his people, and uh, there have been human rights abuses, and those need to be investigated. Appropriate individuals need to be held accountable for those uh, abuses, for the U.S. or for anyone to. Uh, uh, create some kind of safe exit for uh, Colonel Gaddafi. He uh, he has, as we say here in in, in America, he's made his bed, uh, and now he uh, he'll have to lie in it. And and uh, I, I think that accountability is uh, is an absolute uh, necessity when you're talking about uh, uh, some of the abuses that have taken place in in Libya.